So hello and welcome to the video. Now I've not made a video about tier point runs for some time, mainly because at the moment I'm not chasing them. I'm in that blissful period between securing status and then having to run around the world again to renew it. So it would be six months before I needed to really look in detail because some of the very best tier point runs have a six month advanced purchase rule. But as I'm sure you all know, BA is changing and aligning everyone's membership year, which is a right pain to understand, but once you get your head around it, a couple of opportunities do pop out. So whilst I, and many of you, wouldn't ordinarily be thinking about tier point runs right now, because of the changes, there may be some things that you really should be thinking about. So in this video, I'll talk again about the membership year-end changes, and I will show you where those opportunities arise. I originally thought I would go on to talk through some of the great tier point run opportunities that are out there at the moment, but if I did, this video would end up being over 30 minutes long. So I'll separate that content out into a separate video, which I'll release in a couple of days. And although I won't be looking to book anything immediately, I do now have a pretty good idea of what I am going to book. So in that second video, I'll share that plan with you. So if that sounds good, and why wouldn't it, stick around. Hi, I'm Matt, and this is Matt's Planet. I aim to entertain, educate, and inspire with my travel adventures from planning to execution. I'll show you how you can travel in style for a lot less than you'd think. So subscribe so you can come with me. I made a video about those year-end changes when they were announced. The feedback I got was that that video was quite helpful. There's a link to it up here. If you haven't watched it, I do recommend it. And even if you have watched it, but you haven't quite got the changes clear in your head, it may be worth another watch. That video talks about the changes to all membership groups, given that before the change, we were split into 12 groups, with each of us having a year-end on the 8th of each month. I'll not repeat the content of that video, but I will talk in a little bit of detail about how the changes do affect me. So my year end was the 8th of August, past tense, as I'm recording this towards the end of that month. So in the membership year that ended on that date, I had collected 1,500 tier points, which got me status for that year, for the entirety of the year that I'm now in, and for the grace period at the end of it. So even though the end of the year that I'm now in is changing, I have secured gold status through to the 8th of August 2025 and for the grace period taking me through to the 30th of September 2025. These changes don't affect that in any way and very reassuringly that date does show up in my membership account on both the app and the website. But let me just linger for a moment on the grace period and on its significance. It's the period where the benefits that you acquired in your expired year still prevail, even though the points you earn count towards your new membership year. So even though my membership year has always ended on the 8th of August, I've always retained my benefits through to the 30th of September, which is another 53 days. That means I'd retain access to better lounges, higher baggage allowances, bonus avios, and so on. And if I accumulated enough tier points in that 53 day window, I would retain my status and would actually never lose it. Which meant I was only ever chasing tier points every other year. Most people look upon the BA Executive Club as having an annual cycle. But if you time your travel shrewdly and take full advantage of the grace period, you can turn it into a two yearly cycle. More on grace periods a little bit later on. So the year I'm currently in has been shortened because of BA's changes. Instead of ending on the 8th of August, it will now end on the 31st of March, which is five months and eight days sooner. Now BA still wants its membership years to be a year long, so any tier points I earned in the five months and eight days at the end of my last year are going to be double counted into my new period. So the year I'm now in will be made up of a five month and eight day overlap period and a six month and 22-ish day new period. And it will be the same for every one of you, even if the length of those periods will vary depending on when your old year end was. And whilst the tier points will be double counted for the purposes of status, they won't double count towards your lifetime tier points total. It's reported that this tier point adjustment is turning up about two weeks into your new membership year. Hopefully that's clear enough, and for me, I really don't care. 
I don't really care about these changes and I don't really care about that double count period. And that's because I have status from my previous year which covers all of this year anyway. So I don't need to earn any tier points or I don't need to have any double counted because I already have status from the previous year. I actually earned zero tier points in the five months and eight day double count period and I'm expecting to earn precisely zero in the remaining six months of my year. My intention has always been and will remain to only ever travel during that grace period every other year. Now one other change that was announced as part of all of this was that when the changes are complete the grace period will be reduced from 53-ish days down to only 30 and everyone's grace period will be the same running from April the 1st to April 30th. This will be a real issue as it will mean every member like me looking to exploit this grace period will be focusing their efforts on booking into the same 30-day window. Before the changes, people's grace periods were 53 days long and they were spread across the 12 months of the year. So in 2026, I predict that this will be a real issue, but I don't think it's going to be such a big deal in 2025. And that's because these changes mean that most people will have an extended grace period in 2025. Mine will actually be six months long. Remember the grace period is the period when your previous status prevails but points will go towards your new year. So as you can clearly see here, the year I'm in will end on the 31st of March and my status will expire on the 30th of September, meaning I'll have half of my next membership year as a grace period. And that is quite a significant upside to all of these changes. So in 2026 we'll all have converged and we'll all be fighting to find bookings in that same 30 day window. But in 2025 many of us will have an extended grace period, indeed some will be 11 months long. Those who had a March or April year end under the old scheme may not see so much upside but 10 twelfths of us should benefit. And as I'll be renewing in 2025 and I'm working to a two year cycle I'll not actually need to renew again until 2027 which means I'll be able to observe what happens in 2026 and then factor that into my planning for 2027. And instead of focusing on a travel window that opened when our old year ended, we can all now start to look at travel commencing on the 1st of April 2025. As for all of us, that will now fall into our grace period. And as that's only seven months away now, you should start thinking now if you're looking at a ticket that might have one of those six month advanced purchase rules. So April in 2026 may be tough, but April in 2025 shouldn't be tough if enough people actually understand what's happening. Hopefully watching this video will help you be one of those that does understand. So the extended grace period is massive opportunity number one that you should be looking to take advantage of which brings us very quickly on to massive opportunity number two. BA is offering double tier points on BA holidays booked which are completed prior to the 30th of June 2025. That's a trip originating in the UK that involves a car or a hotel for five nights within the dates of travel. Now if this was a normal year that would be irrelevant to me because I'd only be looking to travel after August the 8th in my new grace period. But with these changes there's now a three month overlap for me between my grace period and the BA holiday double tier point promotion period. And everyone looking to renew in 2025 will now have some overlap. Whilst before the changes only those with the year end of June the 8th or before would have been able to take advantage of it. Now BA may extend that double tier point promotion, they've extended it twice before and both times I predicted that they wouldn't. And I'm going to predict again that they're not going to extend it, but even if they do, you don't know when they're going to announce that extension, so it's probably wise to assume that it won't get extended. And either way, booking a holiday in April, May or June may be a much better option for you because if it's extended and you look to travel in July or August, that's going to overlap with the school holidays where things may be a lot more expensive. So that's two opportunities that I and many of you will have as a result of these changes. 
So instead of needing 1500 tier points in September, I may only need to get 750 in April if I can get them via a qualifying BA holiday through which they get doubled. I'm going to wrap this video up here, but there will be a companion video along in a couple of days in which I'll talk about some of the tier point run opportunities that are currently out there. And these are runs that you may wish to take advantage of, given that 80% of us are going to have an extended grace period that starts a lot sooner than we might expect. So like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. You probably also know I have a Patreon account, so I'll skip all of that. And all I'll do is say thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.